Hey guys, how are you? Um, so today is a Friday and it's been a nice day. I've done a few things today, but um, I thought today I'm gonna do some tinkering. So I'm gonna go into my garage and start working on that new plane that Becky got me for my, our anniversary. And I'll just tell you what I'm gonna do and I'll try and document it for you to see, to kind of show you what, what you do to get a plane ready for a flight, for its first maiden as they call it. Now, obviously this is not a, it's not like a new plane straight out of the box, second hand. I don't know how long it's been hanging in the shop for. I don't know what problems it has and all this sort of thing. So you have to always kind of figure out all these things before you start flying it. So let's go in and I'll show you what I'm gonna be doing and let's have a look at that quickly. Now mind the music, my music is always blaring when I'm, when I'm in the garage, so I'll turn that down. Okay, cool. So, here she is, Tiger Moth. And what a lovely plane. So. She's a tiger moth and she's in yellow. One of the first things that I always have an inclining about with new planes or secondhand planes is you want to check out stuff like the landing gear, you know, want to see the wheels, how are they put on, how are they being held tight, you know, with nuts like that. These are nice rubber wheels so they're not firm. At the end of the day, this is a nitro plane anyway, so, you know, um, it's gonna have a bit of oomph, it's gonna have a little bit of power, it's gonna be bouncing, you know, it's, it's, it might be gliding, so you, you just never know, so you wanna check that out. It's always worth turning the prop a few times, just to make sure that nothing is tight, nothing, you know, feels wrong, and it feels like it has a bit of combustion, and it has that little kick a little bit, so if I turn it like that, you see, that's the piston, and it has a nice, you know, it's, it sounds like, it, like it's sucking, like the, the carb is okay. Um, Again, with initial planes, when you get them, you want to check control surfaces. You want to make sure that they're all tight, like all the hinges are in there, that they're, they're tight. Uh, you want to see that all of them are okay. You just want to check the general quality, you know, you don't want to see any brokenness in the ribs or in the spars there, because remember, it's all wood and balsa, so you need to kind of really check. At the end of the day, you have to remember that you're going to be flying these around people. Um, and some of the airfields are around, perhaps near where people's cars might be parked. Uh, there's a club that I know which is around here in Norfolk where it actually is based on an act active airfield. So there's always planes coming in and these will glide. The wind can take these away if you lose control of it or you, you, know, you have a radio malfunction with your controller and the plane goes. So it'll, it'll keep flying until it runs out of fuel basically. So. There is that safety feature. You want to just make sure that this is not going to take off, lose power, roll into somebody's car, or crash into somebody's other plane, or hit somebody. You know, safety is a big thing when you're flying big models like this. By the time you get onto petrol, uh, like this bad boy, which is 30cc, we're talking about something that's really hefty in terms of size, uh, that's really hefty in terms of size, but also huge, huge. So that could do a lot of damage. You know, obviously. When you're a member of the BMFA, which is the British Model Flying Association, you're a member because you get insurance, you're, you're covered for it. But that doesn't mean that, you know, you could be negligent in the way you operate these. There's a degree of safety and most clubs are big on safety, so that's the thing. So again, one of the things I'm going to be checking, which I first noticed, is just, if you have a look at that, that's wobbly. You don't want that in the, <laughs> you don't want that in the air. Trust me, you don't want that. So obviously that's going to be one of my first jobs, trying to figure out why that is so wobbly like that. Um, why that is so wobbly like that and probably reinforcing it somehow, seeing what I can do um, and just checking it. So what my task for today is probably is going to be figuring out the electronics in there. Um, first and foremost, figuring out all the electronics. How do you get it all set up? How do you wire it all up? And the, and the best way to check something is to get it all wired up, get the radio moving, figure out what's working, what's not, how much throw is on it. Um, and it would be a huge accomplishment if I could not only do that, but get the engine running. And that really tells you a lot, you know, so I can see how the engine's running, see how it sounds, if it is starting, if it isn't, will I need to change that? All of those sort of things are very, very important. So that's what we're going to do. And... If I find something out that's interesting, sorry about my dog. If I find something out that's interesting, I will come back and show you that. But we're gonna, I'm gonna delve into the electronics and try and get it running and to see, to learn things. First stage. 
Let's do this. Okay, so time for an update. So, we've been busy. Not that much time, but uh, I'll show you what I've been up to. Let's go this way. Right, so first things first. Let's have a look. So basically, I'm just gonna turn the camera around. As you can see, I've put in a new battery connection so that it takes, it flies with the light pose rather than what was installed before. I've put in a new radio system, which is the receiver for my transmitter over here, my DX6. My DX6. Um, and now I'm just basically sorting out the servers. What that means is this. So when I switch it on, you see all the electrics come up. And when I start to move the controls, you can see that the controls are starting to move and the servers are going as well. And that's what I'm just testing out. Making sure that everything works in the way that it should do. But one of the things that I also need to do while I'm doing that is I need to make sure that everything's aligned and it's just clicking right. So up is up, down is down, left is left, and that I have all the full throw of the surfaces, you know, like the full flaps and everything like that. Why is that important? Because when I'm flying, I want to make sure that I have absolute control. And though you don't always fly with full throw, as we call it in the hobby, you don't fly with the full thing going up because that's really for more aerobatic. It's for extreme maneuvers. It probably moves a little bit gently. It's always good when you're setting it up that you start with that full throw so you know that your radio has that control and then you kind of tune it or wind it down to have the small throws that you want to fly with. But because it is a tiger moth at the end of the day, I'm hoping that at some point, rather than just flying scale, straight and level, I wanna see what she can do. I wanna see if I can put her in a loop or roll her and stuff. And I think she should be able to do that. In theory, <laughs> she should be able to do that. So I wanna make sure that I have all my control surfaces working just crisp. But I'm really happy because the electronics seem to be working and actually, the electronics that came with this plane are very good. Like for example, it's just handy. Small little switches like that, you know, for on and off are handy. Making sure that the, like all my servers are working, that none of them are bust, none of them are broken already. Stuff like that is really encouraging. So next step after me sorting that out is going to be trying to start the engine to see whether the heart of the airplane actually works. And now that's the big question. If that works, then we may not have as much work on this plane to do as we may think, if that works, sorry, we may not have a, as much work to do on this plane as we initially thought. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so I was outside, ready to go, ready to kind of try and fire it up straight away, put fuel in it, and then I tried to turn the prop and it got stuck. So it's quite stiff now and it shouldn't be that stiff. It's not turning anymore, which could be one of two things. Old engine, old grease stuck, or it's a bugged engine. Number two, it could be that I flooded the engine somehow and it's unhappy with that. So the job I was dreading, but probably the job I should have done the first thing, is check this motor. So that's what we have to do now. We have to take off the cowling, take off the prop, and see what we're dealing with. Sometimes these things happen, sometimes they don't. Anyway, let's get at it. The cowling is off, prop is off, and it still feels really stiff for some strange reason. Um, I'm really, really hoping I'm not going to have to do an engine, an engine transplant, because I, I have a spare. This I know is a very good quality engine. It's called an Irvine, 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 it's really good used to be on another plane that had an accident but this is why you keep spares because you're always going to need spares in the future the problem is i don't know what's up with this engine i'm gonna have a look at it but i may have to i may have to transplant and put a bigger engine in which sounds cool but could cause a lot of problems later on when flying so we're gonna have to figure this out and this is the thing about nitro planes, which is unlike petrol planes, nitro engines, not that they're temperamental, they just so, as I suspected, turned out it was just 
flooded. So when I put the fuel in, because I was using the electric pump, I must have been pumping so much fuel um, at a high pressure that it just filled up the whole engine. But now, as you can tell, it spins quite softly. Do you see? Which also gave me a chance to look at it and to look at the engine make and I realized that actually it's a OS Max FP which basically is a good engine. It's a very good engine. I shouldn't have any problems with it and I took out the spark plug as well just to have a look at that and that looked good to me. So I'm going to try and do something foolish now which is start it while it's mounted on my workbench. I've put some of these to kind of stop it from going whoa, straight in front because they'll only pull, which is the nice thing. It's not going to try and go backwards or anything on me. Um, and these are pretty heavy, so if these don't stop it, <laughs> we're screwed. But they should, basically. Like a kitten. 